watching TVC Breakfast. Last week, Elizabeth Muhammad Buhari assented to the minimum wage uh, repeal and reenactment bill 2019, making it an act. His action put to an end the long drawn battle between Nigerian workers and government over increased wages. That law makes it compulsory for all employers of labor in Nigeria to pay their workers a minimum of 30,000 naira as wage per month. Organized labor has said that state governments must be prepared to begin the payment of the new minimum wage of 30,000 naira immediately. It's also said that debtors, that states, uh, would not be given any relief. Well, joining me now is the former chairman of Personnel Practitioners Consultative Association, Ikeja Zone, and member Chartered Institute of Personnel Management, Jide Olugun. Thank you for joining us on TVT Breakfast. Happy Easter. Good morning. <laughs> Happy Easter. All right. Now, um, the president has signed into an act, uh, the 30,000 naira minimum wage. Does that put to an end to the long drawn battle of uh, a wage increment? Yeah, talking about the battle, I think it has brought it to rest. But the challenges are still there, which is asking the question can this handle the welfare needs of the workers at the minimum level? If you look at section 16, uh, subsection 2D of the Constitution, it's demand for putting in place under the economic policy of the government a minimum living wage. And mm. the question now is, can this increase meet that can uh, it? demand? So I'm throwing that question. I, I doubt it. In 2011, you know, when it was increased to 18,000 Naira, the exchange rate was 162 Naira to a dollar. And if you benchmark it, it was about 111 you know, uh, dollars as at that point. Yeah. Today that it is increased to 30,000 Naira, exchange rate officially is about 360, which brings it down to $83. So, and you, you now look at the cost of living right now, and I doubt if it will serve that purpose. But the government has been advised to work on the larger circle of this uh, matter, which is working on the economy. Mm. And that is why the IMF prescribed that we should remove the fuel uh, subsidy. subsidy. And, then and then but another the government suggestion is saying came on increasing the VAT. But by the 50%. government has said it is not um, removing subsidy anytime soon, and as well as the VAT. But then there are also uh, suggestions as to reviewing the revenue sharing formula because uh, some state governments, uh, like, like we know, cannot really handle this. For the 18,000 naira, some states were unable to pay, and now we are saying that any organization or states that can't pay should be sued. Yeah, talking about suing the organization, we are talking about 30,000 minimum wage, even though the government is willing to handle the, the legal matter on behalf of the victims. But what about the bureaucracy around it? How prompt will this be? You know, and I mean, and talking about reallocation of resources, I think it will take a large act to achieve that because those who benefit in that region are already used to it. We talk about a situation where Revenues come into the federation accounts, you know, from oil and gas, from customs and other uh, taxation and things like that. And this is shared to the 36 states, 774 local government areas of the country. We have the security votes and different kinds of bogus allocations. So if we can trim down on these allocations and prioritize in every country of the world the human resources you know, occupy the most important put, uh, position in terms of productivity. And that is why if you begin to find out the countries of the world that rate as the best place to live and work, you, you find Singapore at the top. top Singapore yes. pushed New Zealand behind. You find Germany, you find Canada, you find Sweden. And of course, focus is on productivity. So I think we need to do more on how we engage our resources resourcefully so that those who drive the process can really be inspired, right. motivated, and earn the minimum living Again, wage. wage. You know, not right. just minimum <laughs> wage. And All that right. is the prescription also under the International Labor, Labor Organization, yeah. which has been in existence since 1919. So it's like, globally speaking, you need to ensure that those who are driving the processes, that they are happy doing it, 
And of course, like the president demanded, okay. they also should be committed. Now, the organized labor is calling on the uh, Salaries and Income, Income and Wages Commission to begin the implementation table, to come up with the implementation table of how the minimum wage is going to play out and uh, consult with the states as well as the MDAs. Uh, what are we looking at? How complex would all of that be, really? It shouldn't be a complex assignment if the resources are there and if they are diligently deployed. I think the challenge we have is that do the states have the capacity to sustain this new paradigm? Because even under the old regime of 18,000 Naira, some of the states found it difficult to pay. Now that has been increased to 30,000 Naira. But given the massive resources in this country, it's just a matter of prioritizing your, your financial you know, uh, engagement, you know, for example, uh, can we trim down on some unnecessary and luxurious expenditure? But above all, I think we need to energize the economy of the states. You know, for example, you should be concerned that a place like Zamfara recently gave us a picture of illegal mining of gold. I think for some other countries of the world, gold is enough to even run the country. To run the entire you country. You talk about the USA, for instance. <coughs> I mean, me. California is one of the 50 states, and it's like the fifth largest economy in the world. They don't even have oil and gas. And bringing it to the national level now, basically, you look at Qatar as a nation. Qatar is preparing to hold the FIFA World Cup by year 2022. As of today, Qatar commands about over $12 billion investments in, 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 in even retail and different so, kinds so, of diversification. So this, so this is all about leadership and what leadership or leaders can do as, as a creative means of changing the narrative the way it is right now. Exactly. All right, now the, 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 the organized labor is still giving the, uh, the commission this week to come up with that implementation. Otherwise, they're going to face the wrath of the law. I don't think we should go through that uh, route. A posture. It's not about implementation template. Okay. It's about capacity and about holding them accountable to it. Now it is the law. You need to respect it. You see, and that is why we are also advising on the larger platform that can the National Assembly begin to engage the government, even if some are afraid about, you know, um, regional government that we call true federalism. Can we migrate some of the resources under the exclusive legislative list to concurrent or release these resources to the state? There is no state in this country that is not endowed. Then let the state now be held accountable to maximizing mm. these resources to Where create prosperity. Where has comparative advantage? Okay. Dido Logu, thank you so much. We have to leave you here right now. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you.